Good day and welcome to this week's edition of Tourismus Namibia, our weekly broadcast that we bring you um, as part of the NMH shows every week. As you can see on the screen there, my name is Frank Steffen. I'm the editor of the German, uh, German newspaper, I must say, Allgemeine Zeitung, and obviously responsible for Tourismus Namibia. So, as always, we bring you some, some news and obviously destinations and finally to, to the point. But let us quickly introduce you to what we'll be bringing. Uh, first up, we obviously, under topics, we've got the Gondwanaland Geopark. It's something that has been on the cards before. It's being revived. And then, uh, furthermore, we talk a bit about Apollo. This is the elephant that was originally caught near Swakopmund. Before we go forward to the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, that's the COP15 conference that was held this week. And then finally, we have a nice little whale video for you. So um, I hope you will all enjoy that. Under destinations, we then go further and have a look at the Goodfellas uh, pub in, in Windhoek uh, before we go to Earth Neek. Uh, Earthnik that is in Swakopmund. Um, and then finally, under to the point, we talk a bit about Sikunga fish guards. So those are our contents for this week. Uh, but first up, we obviously have topics. Right, let's delve right into it. Um, first up, we've got the Gondwana Land Geopark, and uh, people should not confuse it with the Gondwana Collections. Um, this was a park that came up uh, some time ago already, in fact, a decade ago, and people invariably got confused this week when the, uh, when, when the talk got to Gondwana Land Geopark again. It, uh, the Gondwana Collections is a privately owned uh, tourism organization, whereas the Gondwana Land uh, Geopark is something that is designed to ultimately become part of the UNESCO Geopark. So the principle is not a new one. What is interesting is that finally we've caught up with it again. And so um, Dr. Gabi Schneider previously was quite involved with it. So I acquired the permission of the geological survey offices in the Ministry of Mines and Energy. And uh, my colleague Oscar Oscar then uh, took that presentation of Dr. Schneider and cut it into a video clip. Have a look. Audio jungle.
Right, and that was the Gondwana land uh, geopark, something that's uh, coming up again and should be very interesting for, for Namibia, I believe. Um, uh, like we last week, we spoke a bit about this, uh, uh, the fact that we are looking at different types of tourism now. Art tourism, uh, if we look at the, the, um, the, the, the men from the... Uh, um, from, from Koukerfeld, the stone men. So this week, like I said, it's something different new. Right, let's talk about Apollo. And uh, Apollo is a big brother to Ace and Astro. That's what Nguyen uh, Kuse announced this week. And uh, this photo here was taken in December 2019 uh, by my colleague Erwin Leuschner. Uh, when suddenly we had these elephants, uh, or not elephants, this elephant running around close to Swakopmund, which was yeah, obviously a delight, but in some ways also sad. So if we look at the next photo, that was uh, uh, with him uh, running around there in February 2020, still very feeling very at home there in the desert, um, basically getting his pasture from uh, the Swakop River Valley. And uh, so in uh, April two, 2020, this was posted by Graham Kuse. That was after he'd been caught um, because obviously he couldn't stay in Swako permanently. Uh, he would have been a threat to people over time because he was running around on the golf course there and stuff like that. So um, they relocated him to the Zania Reserve. Um, that's obviously part of Ankuse, and, and um, so if we look at the uh, um, at the next uh, photo, this is obviously where he's been at home now for some time, um, and he's he's in good shape. I mean, this photo could have been easily taken in Etosha or anywhere in Namibia. He's in good shape, and what is good about it, um, he's sort of become the bigger brother to Ace and Astra, which are so so they're really a trio that uh, that. Uh, live in the Zania Reserve now uh, by Nkuse and um, actually I was able to get hold of a video that shows just how big those other two have become. Um, so Ace and Astra were obviously growing up there while Ap Apollo was a new newcomer but uh, have a look at the video, it is quite a nice one to look at. Yeah, well, that was the video. Uh, obviously, that was then of Ace and Astra, and I must admit the video was posted by Nguyen Kuse earlier in the year. But I just wanted to show you what the, the environment is like. And if you look at this map here, you have a good idea of where the Zania Reserve actually is. Um, here at the bottom, you see Osea Kutaku International Airport. And uh, further to the left, you've got Noidam College. So it's actually quite close to Vintuk. It's, a, it's, it's where Ankusa originally started with their idea of having um, a bit of a, conserv a conservation area. So, yeah. So Apollo is, I think, under, in good shape and, and obviously not alone because I know that quite a number of people said, yeah, but if he's wandering alone now, well, how, how long will that last and how will that work out? So good to see that for a change we didn't have to shoot him because he's supposedly a problem animal. Right, and then desertification. Uh, this week in Abidjan they had a big conference going on and it's all obviously about desertification and how to combat it worldwide. It's uh, part of the United Nations Convention to Combat uh, Desertification. And Namibia obviously spoke there as well and uh, the Minister of Environment and Tourism uh, I must actually say Environment, Forestry and Tourism, MEFT. He reckons the root causes of land degradation in Namibia stem from high levels of uh, rural poverty, insufficient institutional and individual uh, capacity, weak funding for sustainable land management and under application of te technologies and eventually recurrent droughts. Now, uh, he might have said that at COP15, it's the 15th edition of this UNCCD, 
But um, I, I would say what they tend to forget in the process is that our problem is not only those ones. Um, we're not exactly doing the right thing by, if you looked at that photo there, uh, by actually putting uh, uh, oil rigs in that sort of area. So we have a couple of areas which are actually very nice and very fine. This is up in uh, Okavango, uh, close to the delta already. And so it, it would seem stupid that we now actually go and look for oil in those areas and actually end up, uh, because that oil can only, according to people, be uh, gotten hold of if you, do, if you do the fracking. And fracking is known to leave behind a desert. So um, I think they're, they're missing the point a bit if they only look at the obvious reasons and the historical reasons if they add man-made problems. So. Anyway, enough about that again, because it's obviously a favorite subject of mine, Recon Africa. I simply do not believe that they belong in that area. Um, it's not a personal thing with Recon Africa. It's simply a case with no oil should be drilled in Kavango, because it's a, it's a biodiverse uh, paradise that we have, and it, it should not be under threat. Right, um, then up next, we've got a little video that uh, my colleague, uh, Jereen Bota, got hold of. And um, it's a humpback whale, she said, videoed from the air as it breaches the surface. And uh, this amazing footage was, uh, uh, also shows quite a number of shoals of fish and, and, and schools of fish. And it was made available by B Extreme 3 d But have a look yourself. Right, and that was the whale. I hope it relaxed you a bit because on a Sunday, this is obviously, there should be some time for that as well. And up next, we've got destinations. Right, and the destinations, we obviously bring you various sites that our people visit or that they notice. So it's not always uh, only about going to lodges and going to this, that, or another place. We try and mix it up a bit. That's why I always ask my colleagues to, to submit some information so that we hopefully don't bore you under. Because under. the idea is obviously to give you different angles, give you different choices, options when you visit Namibia. And you can only know about them if, if we tell you about them. Because I, I know for a fact that if I go to, to a neighboring country and I get there, obviously I start asking around and f try to find out what are my best options. Um, and hopefully with this show, we can sometimes give you a couple of nice ideas that you didn't think of before. So up next, uh, um, Irene Marie van der Walt. She's a colleague of mine, a young colleague. And she was on the show previously. 
she had a look at Goodfellas uh, Pizza and Pub in Vintook, which is just around the corner. Uh, I actually indicate there on the map, you can see NMH there with that circle around. And there on the left, you see Government Park, uh, which is obviously quite big. A government Park being a Ministry of Agriculture and Education and various other ones that are uh, sort of at home there. And then just up there at Lillian Cron Street, you see Goodfellas Pizza and Pub. It's obviously not the only restaurant there. That, that whole area has quite a number of different eateries and so on. So actually, it's quite nice. So if we look at the next photos here, here you can actually see it. Um, there on the left, you see Government Park, some of the buildings. And Goodfellas is like Lillian Cron right up the street before you start. Uh, going to the left into your next street. So, anyway, and uh, she visited it uh, in in uh, Vintook. Uh, the Goodfellas Pizza and Pub has a sort of retro uh, um, uh, thingy about them. Obviously, speaking to the uh, theme of Goodfellas, and uh, you find uh, wood-fired pizzas there. And I've been there myself, and I'm, I can tell you, the stuff is good. It's got uh, these pizzas are just from the best. And then obviously you can also order burgers, pasta, salads and Buddha bowls and bar vegan options. And on Saturdays uh, you often have live music there as well. So, and you can obviously just take a takeaway. By the way, these shots are not only advertisement shots. This stuff is really looking that way when it reaches you. I can attest to that. But let's have a look at the video. Drawing great inspiration from the cult favourite classic action film Goodfellas, the Goodfellas Pizza and Pub in the capital city of Vintuk has proven itself worthy of being a cult classic as well, in just a year. At Goodfellas Pizza and Pub, all attention is invested in the customer experience, from the uniforms of waitstaff that are meant to allude to the namesake of the restaurant, to the immersive service and the comfort food that is crafted with great care. Here at Goodfellas, every detail matters. Goodfellas was opened a year ago and instantly became a favourite among locals with regular live music and a mouth-watering menu. In the future, the power duo behind this fan favourite restaurant hope to garner an international following, dreaming of franchising across the pond. However uncertain the future may be, one thing is for sure, Goodfellas Peter and Pub will continue to steal the hearts of the public. Right, and that was Goodfellas. That was our first destination in Vintook. Very nice uh, if you want to go out. And actually, we, we already sat there for a whole Saturday um, afternoon. So it's, it's really pleasant there. Then my, uh, um, Micheline Navatises, another young colleague of mine down at the coast, um, she went and had a look at Earth Neek. Now, Earthneek, uh, funny enough, you don't find it on the internet yet, so maybe they're still working on it. But I spoke to Micheline and she pointed out to me um, that it is very um, central in town. Um, if you look there at that reddish uh, spot, those are the roofs of Vermont um, Brock. And just down the road, as you go down towards the, the uh, beach, you will uh, then find Earthneek. So if we look at the next photo, you will see it's almost like a little niche where you go inside there, uh, a little mini mall, I would almost say. And if you go in there, there's an ice pa uh, parlor, ice cream parlor right in front of the street and sort of next to it inside the, the little mall. That's where you find Earth Neek. And it's, it seems to be, to be really a very nice place. If you look at the photos that Micheline uh, has uh, forwarded to us, and she gave me my, easily 30 photos, but this sort of just gives you an idea of what, what they have there. Obviously, all types of uh, jewelry and, and this sort of thing uh, um, 
you know, jewelry is obviously what probably got Micheline to go there in the first place. She spoke to Tuli Halwendo, and uh, she's obviously a shop assistant there, and gave uh, a, a, Namibia, a, a tourism Namibia tour of this, uh, what they call Earthnik shop, which is located there in the center of town. Um, they obviously sell craft, Namibian handmade craft as well, and uh, also gemstones, and you can see here even these hats. So obviously it's not all made in Namibia, but quite a lot of it is made in Namibia. This would be a typical sort of example. Some of this stuff would also be... It is really one of those shops where if you go in there, you see all these various types of thingies that you normally simply don't get hold of. So it's, it's a little, almost a boutique, but uh, obviously with a bit of a natural flair to it. So, yeah, and obviously she provided a video, like she said, she spoke to Tuli Halwendo. So just have a look at the video. Good day, my name is Tuli Halwendo. We have a shop called Ethnic. It's located in Central Town, just behind the rivalry. We specialize in um, T-shirts, gemstones, scarves, a lot of cherries and silver. Okay, let me just show you what we have. Okay, as you can see, um, these are just multi colors we have. We have the necklaces, we have earrings, we have scarves, we have birds, little birds, we have bracelets, and we also have ostrich eggs from ostrich. Um, okay, brown colors. We have the scarves, we have the bags, we have necklaces, we have bracelets, we also have some little um, bowls that you can, wooden crafts accessories that you can maybe put your things in. Okay, um, the good thing about our shop, our shop is according to colors if you came in maybe like if you have a theme and your color is maybe let me say your color is red you just come straight to red you look for what you want you can look for a scarf the scarf we have them in different colors we have in different type of materials we have cotton we have silk we have vesicles a lot of variety of of of, of scarves um okay and then we came to jewelry as well we have a lot of um, necklaces some of them are made with bits some of them are made with bone some of them are made of wood and some of them are made with shawl as you can see this is ostrich shawl they are handmade by our namibian woman okay and we also sell some ostrich um some leather bags quality ones we have leather bags We have also some items made of salt, of stones. They are called soap stone. This is a, just a side plate where you can put your food or just anything you would like to put in. We have this also, are also made of um, stones. They are just for decoration. And we came to green. We have all the scarves. We have ne um, necklaces. We have bracelets. We have bags, um, like African birds. We have African bags. Keys and ostrich. We have um, the soapstone, as I mentioned, and other colors as well. Okay. Then we come to the black. We have scarves. We have necklaces. We have bracelets. Earrings. Okay. Um, hmm. We have all the necklaces, we have scarves, we have um, earrings, we have bracelets, we have variety of scarves, different material, they're actually made of different material. And uh, there's the soap stones. We came to orange and yellow. It's most of the people is their favorite color. We also have a variety of scarves made with different type of materials. And um, this, we also have nice leather bags, colorful ones. Okay. 
and then we have uh, purple purple with pink there's also scarves we have necklaces we have little bags if you are going to town this is also handmade this is also made here in namibia this is leather and this is woven okay then we can we come to the craft this is ostrich exo jewelry for central um, for cent for centuries the sun people of southern africa have um have poised ostrich eggs decoration that's why they this is just also from ostrich and they just painted it they draw it um this is earrings we have also um the head tables. we have necklaces also made with ostrich made all made from ostrich and we also have this craft this is these are all find um in the northern part of the country like this is from a pane tree this is from the palm tree um this is a, actually a fruit from the palm tree all right and then we also have some wooden um animals made from wood they are handmade from our namibian people so this is elephant we have giraffes we have guinea falls giraffes elephants we have zebras and then we have different type of mask um so this is just a wood and it's just painted like decorated with the colors like green yellow black red and white and we also have um this is we also have some key holders these key holders this is made from wood and this is made from bone um and then we also have openers they are also made from wood and it's just painted and we also have um the salt and purple where you can put your salt and or you can put your purple also made of bone and um we also have mask a lot of mask they are made of wood it's just they are just uh, being painted and we have the salt and pepper uh -huh. this is these are all salt and pepper and then we have the wooden spoons this is wooden spoon this is from the mopane tree um it's for your house for, for the it's in, 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 normally used for the household and then we have the spoon his uh okay we also have um fridge magnets they are also made in namibia they are actually from namibia as you can see this is just a picture taken um we have lions we have giraffes we have rhino we have cheetah and also um the fridge magnets this with the namibian flag we also made this is also made it's handmade and these are all handmade and we also have um still some fridge magnets as you can see here it's african it's called african blessings and they say may the african sun always shine on you may the rims of its drum be deeply in your heart may the vision of all its glory fill you with joy and may the memory of africa be with you always it's also from um um namibia and then we also have this wooden elephants we have the metallic uh, magnets whereby um you can you can buy this one together with the book you can put it on your fridge just to write a note or something for you not to forget and we have low key, key rings key key holders um different ones um as you can see here this is also just um it's also from namibia with some animals and then with some with him people and then just with a the namibian flag and with, these are just bracelets then we also have just bracelets made of leather and um the key but we also have the key hooks it's also handmade and then we have the license disc holders with the namibian flag and then we have the tablecloth weight um and then two and then a lot of now key holders and key rings a lot of them 
and then we have uh, then we have the spoon little spoon with a badge and then just pins the license these holders okay and then we come to um to the block it's called block print craft it's actually um made of clay it's clay handcrafted necklaces so we have these are necklaces these are earrings they are made of clay um and and they are handcrafted okay and these are also just made of made from namibia this is just some bits with shawl and so some of them are ankle some of for, for the ankle some of them is just for the arms and then you have the necklaces made of beads yes and um, same applies here we also have some necklaces just made of beads here as well this is made of beads and wood okay then we come to the african earrings most of um, African women like this type of earrings. So if maybe like your theme is black, you can wear, you can make your afro and then you just put on the earrings. Then we have some bracelets here. And we have variety of African earrings made of wood. These are all made of wood and these are made of beads. And we have men. This is all actually unisex. It's for both men and women. It's made. This is wood, and this is bone. This is made from bone. These are all made of bone, and we have this made of ostrich. This is a sun people. They are all made of ostrich. 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 They are necklaces with different type of um, designs. Ostr okay. Okay, and then the necklaces continues for men and women as well. And then the ones that are made of beads and made of us. This is made of with ostrich. Okay. Um, then we have t-shirts. As you can see, this is also made with Namibian flag. We have t-shirts. And we have curbs also. Made of some are the right and scent lovers. Some are written in Namibia, as you can see, some there's some of them they are called floppies. Normally people call them floppies, also with Namibia on. And we have the leather hats. We have the leather hats um, for men, but some they it's also for women. And then here we also have some clothing. We also sell clothing. We sell tops, uh, pants and um and then the craft now this is this is um wooden craft um business card holder this is also just a fruit from the northern part of the country then we have just the craft giraffes we have giraffes and then we have the ostrich now this is called ostrich egg you can use it for decorating in your house wherever in your sitting room or in your bathroom or even in your in your bedroom and we have the wooden bowls these are wooden bowls where you can side the food and also we also have the cutting board and then these wooden bowls as well wooden craft bowls different ones and we have this called this is this is called also monkey bowl but it's also the it's also um from the ostrich egg so you can put a candle and then you light it and we also have this ostrich um this ostrich egg where if you put you can put a, a candle and then the light will pop out okay um, as you can see, Namibia is blessed with a lot of gemstones. Um, we made these rings with Namibian gemstones. It's actually different type of gemstones. I will show you. Um, we have hematite, we have emperor, we have fossil, we have peterside, we have um, narima, 
we have mystic toppers we have labradorite we have calcedown we have malachite we have green onyx we have citrine we have opal we have blue toppers we have crystal quartz we have cubic Zerania and um, here we have tourmaline. Tourmaline is actually a gemstone with different colors and um, we also have Tanzanite. Tanzanite is also a, a gemstone from the word Tanzania. Okay, we have tiger eye. The tiger eye because they, they also have meanings like tiger eye they say they give, give courage, self-confidence and strength and um, it enhances creativity and stimulate taking action, protects against evil, and brings good luck. We also have smoky topaz. Smoky topaz is also a gemstone, as you can see in the picture. And we have this one, the rose quartz. Me personally, I know rose quartz is also found in Swagopmund, and um, it's a best stone for um, for for March, March, March month. It's, um, so it's a Namibian gemstone found in Swakopmund. We also have carnelian. It's orange in color. We have um, we have garnet. Garnet is um, it's for from for January month. It's also a Namibian gemstone. And then we come to this interesting stone. It's called malachite. As you can see, this is a this is made of stone called malachite as you can see here as well the earrings um and then we also just have plain silver sterling silver and we also have pearl and we have map map and pearl they are almost the same and um we also made some bracelets with namibian gemstones like like this one is made of aquamarine like aquamarine these are all aquamarine, but this is pearl. And we just have variety of gem, Namibian gemstones made of earrings, made of bracelets, and then just plain silver. And we also have black onyx. It's black in color, that's why it's called black. <laughs> and we have um, amethyst. It's purple in color. It's a it's quite interesting stone. We also have peridot. It's a, it's the color is green and its birthstone is August. It's very powerful. It reduces jealousy, spirit hater, brightness, and resentment. And it also brings luck, good luck. We also have aquamarine. Aquamarine is for March. It's a birthstone for March, and it's also given on the 16th and 19th wedding anniversary. Okay, we have a lot of gemstones in Namibia. Namibia is blessed with a lot of gemstones. We also have pearl, and we here it's just a variety of of um, gemstones pendants where you can put your necklaces. And here we just have some bracelets made of Namibian gemstones as well. Um, okay black onyx as we said already and then we just have plain silver made of africa like african flag and then just plain earrings and we also just have a lot of beautiful pendants with animals but this is just only just with elephants okay and just a lot of earrings like amethyst as we already said amethyst we have citrine and then we have um, this is just pearl mixed with different type of gemstones like this one is with smoky toppers this is with string this is with peridot blue toppers garnet blue toppers again just variety of some pearls mixed with gemstones then we have a black onyx here as well like this you can see it's a very beautiful necklace it's actually made with three different type of stone it's a sterling silver with black onyx, um, smoky topos, and tourmaline as well, as you can see. 
and we only just have oh, yeah. silver. Sterling silver. Yes, sterling silver with some um, charms. charms on. <laughs> yes, and then we just have now with gemstones, made with gemstones. Right, and that was Earthneek. I must admit, I didn't even know they were there. I know of quite a number of places in Swakrop that offer this sort of uh, stuff, but this seems to be quite a unique, different shop once again, and that's really what it is all about. When we bring these shops, you can obviously only buy from one of them or some of them, um, but hopefully that way you know that there are different choices. So obviously all of our tastes differ that way you've got different options because you will remember on previous occasions we've had quite a number of these shops from Swakopmund already. Anyway so that's Earth Neek. those are our destinations for this week up next we've got to the point. Right, um, like you saw earlier on that uh, uh, photo that we gave of Kavangu, um, of the Okavangu Delta, I must say, um, Namibia has got many different places. I mean, this background video that you've uh, got that I'll br bring here uh, today is, um, uh, I made at Felsenack last weekend, and, and it is a video, by the way, it's not a photo. That's why you see the grass moving a bit, and um, we just feel it's a bit more lively to do it that way instead of always just presenting photos. And this is the typical Namibian environment after a good rain season, all in all, because most of the guys have, have a very healthy felt at the moment. So with us considering the fact that this is obviously a video that was made in the center of Namibia, we then find that our northeast is what you could possibly call a green paradise because that's where we've got the Okavango River, we, that's where we've got the Zambezi River, and that's obviously where, where there's water, there's a different type of uh, um, biodiversity uh, as opposed to what you would have here in the center of, of the country. Now, having said that, last year, 278 kilometers of illegal nets were removed from the Sikunga ca Canal alone. Sikunga Canal, if you look at this map here, you can see there on the left you see Sesheke and Katima Mulilo, that's sort of that, um, and if you would go towards the east, you would then roughly come to what is called the C uh, Sikunga Conservancy. I've just made a rough circle around it, that's more or less where it is, and it's got that little kink in the, in the Zambezi uh, River there, and to imagine that only in the canal, it is a sort of a tiny canal that leaves the Zambezi River and go, uh, joins up with it later again. Um, to imagine that only on that tiny strip you had 278 of, uh, kilometers of illegal nets, those are the ones that you were able to confiscate and burn and, and remove. And, and the problem with those illegal nets are they're mainly uh, monofilament uh, nets and, and also mosquito nets. So these Sikunga fish guards, they do quite a lot of work up there. And um, so they've prepared a little video of their own, not only promoting what they do, but actually showing what they do and what the problem is. Because the problem at the end of the day is that if we allow these nets all over, I mean, clearly it won't only be Namibians, if we allow these nets and that type of fishing, sooner than later, we will not have a fish population in that river anymore. And that obviously brings another distortion to the natural balance. But have a look at the video. The situation with the fishing here, it really is reaching crisis proportions. Commercialization, which is what has happened, has just caused a massive problem. Fish are being exported widely, and that is just 
continually increasing the pressure on the resources. So they introduced these monofilament gill nets. They use these drag nets and all these active fishing methods are what have caused the problem. They've virtually wiped out all of those large fish. I started in 2017, now in September, I'm having five years experience working in the Skunga Conservation. You're supposed to put it alongside the, the bank. If you put like this, it's too bad. Even the boat can be stuck. As we are talking and teaching the fish, right? If you're using the right net, because this one's saving your life, but you cannot lie us, but this one's saving your license, this one. Okay, this one now is saying that saving your license, but the net which is using is not that. needs for other even companies, NGOs, support us with equipment. Right, and those were the Sikunga uh, security guards, or uh, what they call fish guards. Um, and I think it's a very nice initiative, and I wish them all of the best and good luck to actually do their job well. And hopefully educate the people so that they understand why this cannot work. And uh, yeah, but that's uh, one of those things that we need to police and need to be able to check out so that it doesn't uh, permanently destroy a natural resource that we have for the people up there. Anyway, that's the end of our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it and um, hope you have a, a lovely Sunday afternoon before we meet again in another week's time, again on a Sunday, same time, same place. Until then, look after yourself and remain healthy. Bye. Mm -hmm.